Christ is risen. He is risen Hallelujah. We are Easter people. We are called to share the good news we have seen and heard. The shadow of the grave is dispelled in the light of the resurrection dawn. The head, once crowned in thorns, is now crowned in glory. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. We are Easter people. We are called to share the good news we have seen and heard. Not even death can separate us from the love of God. The hands that were held to a cross by nails now hold you in endless grace. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. We are Easter people. We are called to share the good news we have seen and heard. Jesus lives and so too shall we. The one who walked the way of the cross walks the road with us now. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. We are Easter people. Let us sing praises to the living one. Brought to life by the risen Christ, let us truly live. And let us share that life with this world God so loves. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn from the dead. In baptismal waters our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's need through this living water. Where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, bring hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Spirit reigns forever. Amen. Amen. Beloved, I invite you to rise as you're able. Let us join our hearts and voices in our gathering song, Jesus Christ is Risen Today.
seated for the announcements. Good morning and happy Easter, St. Martin's. It is good to be with you today, whether you are here in person or joining us from somewhere else online. Beloved, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. A few announcements as we enter into worship today. I want to uh, start by just offering some thanks to everyone whose hands helped put together Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Vigil. A lot of work went into those services. If you were here, you know that we had a heck of a good time last night. And some wonderful worship throughout the week. I hope you'll join us next year as we do it again if you were not able to be with us this week. But we are glad you are here today. We rejoice in the opportunity to worship together. This morning, after worship, I hope you'll stay because there is food and we need help eating it. There is breakfast down the hall and my gratitude to all who have provided for the breakfast this morning. Deep thanks to our parish life team for all the work they've put in. There will also be an egg hunt and Kelsey's got a word for us on that. Good morning, friends. Good morning. Um, for those of you who are participating in the egg hunt, that's mostly this side of the room, um, we'll do it after service, and everyone will gather in the narthex. So you can go down and get your breakfast, and once you've started, send your children back this way towards us. So we'll start out there. We will not be in the field because it's so wet and muddy and you all of your children look so beautiful. I did not think you wanted to have them roll in the mud. So we'll be doing it along the sidewalk outside. Um, there will still be eggs and we'll have two egg hunts. One for those that are three and under and one for those that are three to fifth grade. So we'll have two sets. That way the big kids can do the big kid things and the little kids can do the little kid things. So yes, we will see you afterwards. The Easter Bunny brought lots and lots and lots of eggs. So it's very exciting. Thank you, Kelsey. Uh, two weeks from today, we will have training for those who would like to learn more about being Eucharistic ministers, for those who would like to bring the Eucharist to our homebound and hospitalized members. Please talk to me. I'd be glad to educate you a bit on what that looks like and help train you into the work. It is good work. And I am grateful for all the hands that help with it. And Jason is back in the booth. Jason, do you have a word for us about Space Cowboys? He's on his way. Good morning. Good morning. So our trip to the Space Cowboys again is five weeks from today. That's May 14th, so we'll be there on Mother's Day. Uh, a couple things. Uh, tickets are $15 a piece. Uh, as I mentioned last week, uh, we are setting aside something like 30 or so tickets for um, sort of outreach purposes with ministry partners and that kind of thing. If anybody wants to donate specifically to that cause, um, please see me after church. Um, I expected to have the actual tickets in my hand uh, this week. They had a little communication problem at the ball club's end uh, during the week. So I will actually have the tickets next week. Anybody who wants to see me, um, I can get you on the list. I can take cash, I can take check. Any questions, let me know. Or Jerry Daniels is also helping me with this. Either one of us would be happy to help you. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Nothing says I love you, Mom, like a day at the ball field. Am I right? <laughs> Some of you are laughing. I don't know if that's a good sign. Beloved, it is good to be with you today. Let us worship the risen Christ together. I invite you to rise as you're able as we continue our worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
risen. He is risen indeed. We receive our unending love and devotion as we celebrate today an undeserved gift of your love. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Beloved, I invite you to be seated. I invite our children to come forward for the children's message.
Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised. As he said, Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers and sisters to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. Grace and peace be to you from God our Creator and our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, last night at the Easter Vigil, I got to talking with John Vickery about how much our respective daughters have grown in what feels like a very short time. I was showing him a few pictures from when Ryan was still small enough for me to hold her in one arm. And it got me thinking back to the experience of becoming a new dad. When I first found out that her mother was pregnant, I had a rush of great joy at the idea of becoming a father followed very quickly by a deep fear that I might not be a very good father. When I first held her, I felt a rush of joy and wonder at this tiny child in my arms, mixed with a very real fear that my big, strong hands would not be gentle enough for this tiny life. Her first steps brought me joy and pride at watching her grow and fear at worrying that she might fall and hurt herself. And I can tell you, friends, for all that has changed over the last nine years, one thing remains the same. Parenting tends to be a mixture of fear and great joy. I can imagine I'm not the only one in the room who knows that. It's not just parenting, either. The older I get, the more I learn that a lot of the big moments in life are situated at the intersection of fear and great joy. Getting married to Julie came with the fear of all that could go wrong, right alongside the joy of just how right it feels to have a loving, supportive partner. Going back to school has brought on a fear of not being able to handle the work along with the joy of learning and growing both personally and professionally. That mingling of joy and fear is something we all encounter at various times in our lives. It is the very heart of hope. The deep joy of what might be alongside the deep fear of what might not. The possible and the impossible held in the tension of where present meets promise. Of course, there are days like today where the joy outweighs the fear. But then there are also those days when the fear outweighs the joy. I imagine that first Easter morning as the Marys made their way to the tomb, they went with more fear than joy. St. Matthew writes that Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were on their way to see the tomb, 
The word is theorisai, which means something akin to keeping watch or vigil. Their purpose is unclear. They have not come, as in other accounts, to anoint Jesus' body. They don't even know they'll have access to it. Because they know that the tomb is sealed and under guard. But still they come to see, to keep watch, to hold vigil. Maybe they come because their hope has died, and they cannot yet bear to let go of this Jesus whom they so dearly love. Or maybe they come because Jesus had said in no uncertain terms that these things would come to pass and they are waiting for the fulfillment of the rest of the promise. That on the third day the Son of Man would rise again. Whether they come bereaved or believing, they come to see the tomb. When they arrive, the earth shakes, and an angel rolls back the stone. The guards see this wonder and faint for fright. The angel says to the women, do not be afraid. The one you are looking for is not here. The angel invites them to see for themselves a tomb that stands empty, though the stone had only just been rolled away. The women hurry back to share the message with the other disciples filled with fear and great joy. Fear because their beloved Jesus is missing. Joy because of the report that he has been raised. Fear because they do not know how this is possible. Joy because in spite of the impossibility of it all, it just might be true. They don't get very far before they encounter Jesus himself. He calls out to them greetings as if he'd only just seen them at dinner the night before. The Marys fall to their knees at Jesus' feet and worship him, filled with a mixture of fear and great joy. Fear because they had watched this man die. Joy because here he stands alive. For them. Fear because they don't want to be separated from him again. Joy because they have good news to share with their friends. And though they surely want to remain with their risen Lord, Jesus sends the women on their way to tell the others what they have seen and heard. With the shaking of the earth, new life has come into the world. With the opening of the tomb, resurrection life has come to us, and with it comes a mixture of fear and great joy. So it is for all of us who have been witnesses these three days. We came to the table with Jesus with fear because we know the dust that clings to our feet, and with joy because Christ has washed us clean. We came to the cross of Christ with fear because we know the depth of our own guilt and with joy because we know the depth of Jesus' love for us. This morning we come to the tomb with fear because we know that the world has changed with joy because we trust that God remains faithful. With fear because we recognize that someday we too will die with joy because in the resurrection reality, death is not the final word. And because Jesus lives, we too shall live. As Frederick Buechner reminds us, resurrection means the worst thing is never the last thing. Dear church, the empty tomb changes everything. No longer do we come to keep watch over things we have lost. Seeing the tomb and the place where he lay, we go out with joy to share the message of all that we have gained. No longer do we live in fear of the pain of death in the dark of the tomb. We rejoice upon seeing Christ, the firstborn from the dead, who midwives us into the new life of the resurrection reality. 
No more do we clutch at our own vain ambitions and hopes, but we cling to the feet of Christ, gladly giving up all we have and all we are into the gentle, nail-scarred hands that hold us secure. The only question, beloved, is what we will do with this gift of grace. Twice in the span of ten verses, the faithful women are told to go out and share the message. The exhortation to go out and share the good news is for you and me as well. Because there is a world outside those doors gripped by fear and in need of great joy. There is a world that God so desperately loves as to die for it that is waiting at the intersection of the present and the promise of possibility and impossibility. And just like you and me, they need to know that the love of God is stronger than even death and the grave. We have come to this place in search of hope, beloved. That place where fear and great joy meet. promise becomes possibility. And as we gather, we hear the words of the angel ring out to us once more. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. Beloved, he is not here, for he has been raised. May we go out with joy to share this good news with everyone we meet. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. We invite you, beloved, to rise as you're able. Let us join our hearts and voices in our hymn of the day, King of Kings.
together with the whole church on earth, beloved, we confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Invite you to be seated or to kneel for the prayers. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You call your church to witness to your salvation. We give thanks for all theologians, preachers, and the teachers who proclaim your gospel. Equip all the baptized to share the joy of the resurrection in all we say and do. Risen Lord, in your mercy. Receive my prayer. You bring abundant life throughout creation. The green blade rises, and creation greets the resurrection dawn. Preserve vineyards and orchards and those who attend them. Feed us with the fruits of creation. Risen Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayer. You show your steadfast love without regard to borders, barriers, or human-made divisions. Infuse your justice in every nation of the world that all experience the peace that only you can give. Risen Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayer. You anointed your Son with the Holy Spirit and with power. Encourage us by his example in our ministries of healing, care, and outreach. We pray for all who are sick or hospitalized, and all the health care workers who care for them. We pray especially for those whose names are on our prayer list, and those we name before you now, aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Risen Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayer. You have put gladness in our hearts. Inspire musicians and dancers to rejoice with songs of victory. Bless the music ministries of this congregation and all who foster our assembly's song. Risen Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayer. As you have raised Jesus from the dead, you show us your resurrection promise. With your holy ones who have sung your praise, free us from fear and empower us to go and tell the good news. Risen Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayer. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Beloved, let us share that peace with one another.
generous God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for those gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service of the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As we prepare to come to the table of mercy, beloved, we remind those of you worshiping along at home to have bread and wine or crackers and juice with you so that you also may participate in the meal. All are welcome to come forward. We have bread and gluten-free wafers. The dark colored liquid is wine and the light colored is grape juice. We do also have individually wrapped communion packets for those who would prefer. Again, all are welcome at this table. Lord, be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. encircled the globe with air, you created fire for warmth and light, you nourished the lands with water. You molded us in your image, and with mercy higher than the mountains, with grace deeper than the seas, you blessed the Israelites and cherished them as your own. That also we, estranged and dying, might be adopted to live in your spirit, you called to us to the life and death of Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together, as the body of Christ, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your Son, the firstborn of your new creation. We remember his life lived for others and his death and resurrection, which renews the face of the earth. We await his coming when, with the world made perfect through your wisdom, all our sins and sorrows will be no more. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and compassionate, send upon us and this meal your Holy Spirit, whose breath revives us for light, whose fire rouses us to love. Enfold in your arms all who share this holy food. Nurture in us the fruits of the Spirit, that we may be a living tree, sharing your bounty with all the world. Amen. Come, Amen. Holy Spirit. Holy and benevolent God, receive our praise and petitions as Jesus received the cry of the needy. And fill us with your blessing, until needy no longer and bound to you in love, we feast forever in the triumph of the Lamb, through whom all glory and honor is yours, O God, O living one 
with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom, kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give, give us today our daily bread. bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Beloved, no matter who you are, what you have done or what has been done to you, there is grace for that. And in this meal, we receive the love of our God. Behold what you are. Become what you receive. The body of Christ given for you. I invite you to be seated. Our ushers will invite you forward by road. <coughs>
May this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace unto life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Love it, I invite you to rise as you're able for the benediction. <clears throat> May the Christ who walks on wounded feet walk with you on the road. May the Christ who serves with wounded hands stretch out your hands to serve. May the Christ who loves with a wounded heart open your hearts to love. May you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet. And beloved, May everyone you meet see the face of Christ in you. Amen. Amen. Let us join our hearts and voices in our ascending song, The Day of Resurrection.